Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed weather video from weatherrisk.com. I'm your host, the Commander of Chaos, the Colonel of Confusion, DT. It's uh, Thursday evening. It's all 5.30 p.m., and we're going to take a look here on this special video about the December 26, 27 Eastern U.S. winter storm potential and discuss why the models are doing what they're doing and also to entertain a few people and hopefully to educate as well. So uh, lots to talk about here. And then also we're going to talk about what January is looking like as well and uh, show you that we are making some progress here with, respecting, with respect to overall things like precipitation and temperature on a monthly climate basis. So uh, let's get right to it. Lots to talk about here. And I do want to wish all of you uh, freaks and losers out there who actually don't have a life Merry Christmas. Okay, first we're going to take a look here and figure out why the European model is taking the system up the uh, Appalachian Mountains and inland, where as opposed to the GFS is not. And uh, there are some interesting features. I'm not going to say that the European solution is going to be wrong or has to be wrong. It does something that's a little unusual, but it's certainly quite possible. So we'll just have to wait and see. It's still too early to say. We'll take a look here. So we'll, I'm going to show you this trend here that the European model has been doing for the past few runs. We'll start by taking a look at the Wednesday afternoon, the 12Z run here of the European model. And um, that's what we're going to be looking at right here, the 12Z model. And this is from Wednesday. So well, let's take a look and see what we can find out here. All right. Um, well, this was uh, the system which the models forecast through the Midwest. This is the current system now moving through the Midwest and the Great Lakes, the one that brought the blizzard conditions to Iowa and Kansas City and Wisconsin. So uh, you see the uh, black oval there? And let me uh, call it up here. You can see it. This little black oval thing right here. See this? That is the upper level energy for the current, the current system moving through the Midwest. All right? Good. Now the next slide here. The system moves up. You see it? Now it's moving up. That same Midwest system is now up in here. See this? Okay. Now it sits up there in, in the southeastern Canada. But what's important here is this little doohickey thing right here. Let me call this up so you can see it. This little thing right here. See this? This is a new piece of energy which the European model is developing over the western portions of Hudson's Bay and far northeast portions of... Uh, would that be Manitoba? Yeah, downtown Manitoba. So that's kind of new, and that's what the European is doing differently. What happens is that the European now, this is uh, yesterday's model run, but by the December 24th, look what it has. It has two features here, folks. This one, which is now headed that direction, this is the Midwest storm. That one there is the Midwest storm. See it? Then this one, which is now headed this direction. So what's happened here is that this little piece we can see right there over Ontario has now become this right here now that's important because what happens is that here's the storm in the Pacific the gun one for December 25 26 27 see it right there that's the system so what's gonna happen is this system is gonna come down here through cat through uh, through the southwest and this way, and then this piece of energy is going to come down, and they're going to meet. They're going to phase. Let's take a look at it. This is what the European was showing yesterday. Now, here's for the Christmas morning. Now, again, we see two features here. Here's number one, uh, uh, the first one, right here. Call it, right? System number one, and here's system number two. See it? Now, this is moving this way, and this is moving this way. Now, here's the system, the big system coming in through California on Christmas morning and Christmas day. What's going to happen? This is going to drop into here. But it's going to do it over here, of course. Well, let's take a look. See, I'll show you what I mean. Look what happens here, here on the 27th. Boom! That's why this model has a storm over downtown Chicago. Yes, that's, that's just about Chicago or maybe southwest Michigan. That's a blizzard for Chicago, Wisconsin, Iowa, Missouri, most of Illinois. And uh, what happens is you can see the phase. Look at the negative tilt. See the trough is running northwest the southeast. That's the negative tilt. You see it right there. Massive system. That's what the European model was doing uh, yesterday. Now let's take a look at the new GFS run here. Uh, this is for the early Thursday morning. Okay, this was early Thursday morning, 1 a.m. Let's take a look. See. Same sort of situation here. Let me call this up here and uh, we'll uh, change my colors here for, for a second. I guess we can go with uh, yeah, we'll use the red. Here's a system right up in here. See it? There it is. And then here's a system from California. All right. Next one. Next slide. 
Now, the Rex block splits into two pieces. You can see it. One piece here and one piece here. Same sort of thing. That's just what the European was doing on Wednesday afternoon. It splits it into two pieces, into two eggs. Okay? And here's the system coming from California doing this way. Now, what's going to happen is now the system which was over southeastern Canada, the Midwest storm, is now moving out like this. And this system is sitting and waiting here. And here it comes. There's the trough. And it's going to go wham. And this is going to go wham. They're going to meet here, not here. Here. That, what the European model is showing. Let's take a look, see. Again, this is the early morning one. This is called phasing. There it is, folks. We've got a definite phase, no doubt about it. And that's what the model is showing. And it's definitely phasing right here. You can see it. See, the system drops in. See how the system drops in? There's your low. There it goes right up the Appalachians. That's what the European model is doing early Thursday morning. And there's your negative tilt. Now, the system, of course, is significantly further to the east. Remember, this was on the Wednesday morning one. We had it over here. Now it's here. So that is a significant shift, you know, in the space of 12 hours. That's a pretty big, that's a pretty big shift. So there's still got possibilities left. Then, now here's the GFS model. So we're going to take a look at this right here. You can, so you can see this in, 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 uh, in some, uh, let me take a look see, so you can see. See, this is the GFS model right in here. Got it? Now this is from this afternoon. This is valid for Christmas morning. Here's our southern system. Okay, now here's system number one, and here's system number two. But look what happens here. The, Europe, the GFS does not drop it. System number one is now up in here. See it? System number two is here, but it is not coming south. No, it does not do that. So this system goes here, and we have a much different system, a different solution, I should say. Okay, so that's what the difference with the GFS and the European. Now, here's the afternoon run of the European, which has just come out a couple hours ago. Valid here, at, again, this is Thursday afternoon's run. Same sort of thing. We can see it very clearly. Here's our big vortex. See it? Here comes the energy. Oops, I got I scrubbed ahead. Now what happens, let's take a look, see. System number one, it now goes into southeastern Canada. But look at this system, number two. See that? And as a result, here comes the southern system. So it's going to go this way, and this is going to drop in here. That's what's going to happen. On the European model, that's what the European model is showing. Sure enough, here's our negative. And you can see very distinct negative tilt right here. Look at this. There's the low, very strong. And this system is dropping in big time. Phasing. 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 See it? That's what, is, that's what the European model is doing. And now we have our storm. Again, it's almost the same location as the 0, zero one, going, uh, going up the spine of the Appalachians. No doubt, you can clearly see it. Going up the spine of the Appalachians, just like this. Boom. Very intense storm, but that's what it's doing. Now, uh, that's what the two solutions are showing. So uh, it's very possible here that the European model could be correct. I cannot rule that out. And nobody can because we don't know if that feature. I do believe, and this is the important point here, that by December 22nd, let me put this up here, okay? Um, by December 22nd, we'll have a much better idea of what this feature, uh, whether or not uh, the, what this phasing, this is going to split and then drop in. We'll have a much better idea if that happens. So well, I sh that, that should be, I think, on Sunday, Monday. Now we'll have an idea of whether the European model is going to be correct or not. All right, let's go on beyond this and take a look and see what's happening here uh, be after that. Of course, this is the day 10 pattern, and what's happened is now, now developing a split flow on the European model, and we now see a, a positive p and You see how the flow splits here? One branch comes southward, as you can see, just like this. Comes here, then it comes here, then it comes here, and the other branch does this, and then down, and then this way. Split flow, there's your P&A right in here. So that's what the January is looking potentially significant. Now, this is for end December 30th, but we have another big piece of energy here in the southern stream, and there's our ridge coming this way, the cold air. So that might set up another storm around 2nd or 3rd, which the GFS went ballistic with this afternoon. So that's a possibility. Now, looking at beyond that is January 13th. 
Is it cold? Is it going to be serious cold? Yes, it is. And let me just explain to you what's going talking about. This is the overall temperatures for November. Okay, everyone see that? Let's take a look. See, November. Okay, cold here, warm there, cold there. Now, let's take a look at the common models and see how good they were. This was as of October 1st. The climate model, the CFS, right in here you can see it, for November. Got it? October 1st, for November. Warm, warm. Not very good. But, this is now for October 15th, as you can see. See it? Right in there. For November. Now we're beginning to see a little bit of cooling in here, and all the warmth is back up in here. And then finally, as we get to the end of the month, now look what it's showing. This is as of October 28th, for November. Cold up in here and down to the east. Cold up in here and down to the east. And that's almost what we saw happen. There it is. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay. Now let's take a look for December. See what's happened here. Okay. Here's December 1st. November 1st, I should say, for December. A lot of warm, 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 cold up in here. See that? Okay. So far, so good. Now, let's take a look at how for November 15th. What happened? November 15th right there. Again, this is for December. See that? Super warm, super warm, super warm everywhere. So my model began to pick up on the trend very quickly. And then by November 28th, look at this. For December, right before, for the whole month, Amazing warmth all through here. Amazing warmth everywhere. And what's actually has been the case? Not too bad. This is a darn good forecast, folks. Yes, that is a darn good forecast. Check mark. Yes, no doubt about it. Okay. So let's take a look at January and see what it's doing. This was the forecast here for January as of December uh, 10th, I should say. Did I skip one? Let me take a sure I might have skipped one. Nope. Nope. This is one for January 10th. And uh, we can see here for December 10th, it started showing for January. We had a very warm start to the CFS here for December 10th for January. Lots of warm here. Lots of warm here. All the cold stay way up in here. But now look what's happened. There's been a major shift in the CFS over the last 10 days. And what's happened is we're getting closer and closer to January. We're now getting closer and closer to January. See this? December 20th. And look at the cold. Look at this cold, folks. Wow. Wow. January is going to be a cold month. There's no doubt about it, in my opinion. The trend is clearly going that way. Anyway, that's the forecast, and that's the summary. We'll see what happens with the system December 26th. Uh, my view is that I do believe, uh, essentially, the Appalachians are going to get slammed with a big storm, the Ohio Valley as well. Uh, New England is still up in the air. There's going to be significant snow in much of New England. The coastal areas, eh, probably mix, go back over. Uh, New York City will be like that as well. How far inland, where the ice storm is going to form, I do believe that's somewhere in the interior portions of Virginia, Maryland, maybe eastern Pennsylvania, there could be a significant amount of ice. We don't know that yet, and uh, we'll see what happens after that. This is meteorologist DT. I'll talk to you soon.